blow some stuff up. Uh, Melissa, she preached on uh, the, like a lot of the fundamentals of the baptism of the Holy Spirit and understanding. Uh, one of the things she really screwed down on was praying in tongues. And, and that is, it is weird. Don't, we, we understand it's weird. It's super weird. I had a, a young person speaking with me this week and uh, she was asking about church and our church. And she's like, so do you guys uh, speak in tongues? And I'm like, yes, we do. And she said, that's so weird. And I said, I know. It's so weird. In fact, it's so weird that in the Bible, when it first started to happen, they actually said, these people are off their heads. These people are out of, out of it. They're, they're, they're blue drunk. And, and so it's super weird. And, but that doesn't change the fact that it's real, that it's powerful, and that it works. And, um, if we, um, and Melissa really, really, really explained that really well. Pastor Chin was speaking. One of the things that really spoke to me was to walking in the authority of God. Dad said, and how that will shift an atmosphere, how we take that into a dark place and light it up. And so what I really want to do is actually take both of these uh, things a little bit further and, and talk about the purpose of the release of the Holy Spirit on earth uh, and what better place to get our understanding of that from than the Bible. What a great idea. What a fantastic idea. Um, I, I just concluded a, a position that I've been in for a, a few years and one of the, one of the, you know, like you sit around and have your cake and they're saying the nice things. One of the nice things was he always has his really terrible dad jokes. I was, I was like, well, I don't know if that's a compliment or a, I'll take it, I'll take it. All right, so getting it, I want to start at the start. So a really good place to start is Genesis chapter one and verse one. And it says, in the beginning, God, that's just a cool thing, separate thing. We just sort of little highlight that. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Darkness was over the deep. Pastor Chin was talking to us about bringing the word of God into darkness. So we're going to have a look at that shortly. But what I want us to see is that in the beginning, the Holy Spirit was there. He was, was there. And what we have to understand is that the Holy Spirit is God. He's not a gift. He's not a uh, inanimate object. He's not a release of power. He is the third person of the Trinity, the third person of the Godhead. And, and we're just going to uh, want to show you in Scripture how where we can really, really like just see clearly that the Holy Spirit is part of what we call the Trinity. Do you want, I'm going to like some of you guys, this might wreck your head. Do you know that the word Trinity is not in the Bible? I'm going to take a sip of water and let that sink in. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. It's a concept that we understand God by but, but as, we, as we look through scripture, we can see this Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Which one is God? They are. It, it can't be separate God because the scripture says there is one God, worship one God, worship him only. So how could there be three if we have to worship one? And then we can see like this crossover where the Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Christ. It's also called the Spirit of God. And we also see as a separate person right here as we're able to see it in uh, when Jesus is talking up to his disciples about his exit from planet earth so we see the we see the lord jesus manifest as a human being at the start of the new testament but what we can understand is that he was not born then his physical manifestation in the form of the person that walked around planet earth two thousand years ago was born then he wasn't he was he is the word of God. Uh, one of the places says the word of God. So he's God manifest on earth. So right through the Old Testament, we see these things. We see uh, this, the angel of the Lord. You read that through the scripture. It, and like it, and it's, it's a distinction between an angel of God and the angel of God. The angel of God is the manifestation of God in person. So like we'll see Abraham was visited by the angel of God and some angels of God. 
and and what what we see, what we understand and and no one can really confirm it or but we what we think and uh is is that that was jesus manifest and what we see here in in the beginning was god created the earth but then as uh, that's verse one in the beginning was go, uh, in the beginning god single created the heavens now the earth was formless and empty darkness was over the deep and the spirit of god was hovering over the water verse 26 says then god said let us make mankind in our image in our likeness Suddenly there's a plural, plural, plurality, it's a word, it's a word. We start to see that unless God's using the royal we, we start to see more than one entity. Where we, where we see it crystal clear is we move into the New Testament and there's the Lord Jesus is talking about his exit, John, uh, John chapter 14. And so you've got the person Jesus. So imagine... Jesus is right here talking with you and me. And then he says, I will ask the Father, which from context, we've explained plenty of times through the Gospels that our Father who art in heaven is, 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 I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. That word another is the vine's Exploratory, uh, expository dictionary of the New Testament. My Bible college, one of my Bible college lecturers said, you're, you're Greek, you, it's like underwear. You need to have it, but you don't let everybody see it. You, it's, <laughs> but on some occasions, I think it's necessary to show you Greek. This word another is, is the Greek word alos, which means another of the same kind heteros means another of a different kind so this is saying i will give you another uh, another advocate another parakletios another of the same kind it's like if i'm going to give you another piece of fruit i'm giving if i'm giving you one apple and i'm going to give you another piece of fruit i'm giving you another apple if i'm going to give you a, another piece of fruit but it's a different kind like an orange perhaps it's a heteros I will give you a heteros if I'm giving you another different thing. I'm giving you an alos if I'm giving you another of the same thing. So we're seeing here Jesus talking to the Father, saying he will send another, and which he clarifies who that other is, advocate to help. Uh, and he will be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The same spirit that was hovering over the waters. So right here we see in crystal, we, crystal clear, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We see the Trinity right there. And we can understand from this that the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is not just a, an, an ethereal entity. A, a, he's actually a person, the person of God. And, and what we start to understand is that this person, the same as Jesus would hang out with his disciples, the Holy Spirit hangs out with you and me. The Holy Spirit is here with you and me. What did Jesus say about it? Uh, he said, uh, the spirit of truth, uh, the advocate to help you and be with you forever. He's here. He, he's not going anywhere. And, and go, Jesus goes on. He says, I won't leave you as orphans. So what we're seeing here is that there's God. God on earth at the moment is the Holy Spirit. We pray to God the Father, we pray to Jesus, we pray, it doesn't matter because like the Holy Spirit, community, he's it's the Spirit of the Father, it's the Spirit of the Son, it's one God. I, I don't understand it, above my pay grade, but I would really hope that my God is a bit more than I can understand, otherwise my God's too small. And, and actually that's where the fall of man happened was Adam said, I want to be like him, I, I want to be on the same level as God. And it was uh, the ultimate revolt. And that's where mankind fell. So personally, I like knowing that my God is bigger than I can understand. There's a security in that. Now, getting to the fun stuff. 
So really, we clarified here that God, the Holy Spirit, is a person and he's here with us. Okay. Now, why is he here? I'm glad you asked. He's here to execute the will of God on planet Earth. The same as Jesus was. Now, the thing is with the Holy Spirit, Jesus was operating with the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of us might remember the story where on his baptism, where he was water baptized, and then as he came up, the Spirit came on him like a dove. And it wasn't until that moment that he started doing supernatural miracles. Jesus himself was not doing miracles until he had his encounter with the Holy Spirit. We are no different. So the Holy Spirit now is not just on one man. He's on his church, which is a whole lot of people. Amen? All right. So Jesus said this in John chapter 16, uh, uh, 16 verse 7, but in fact, it's best for you that I go away. Jesus right now, imagine like, He's, like, you know, people talk about, oh, if you got to have one one dinner with anyone in history, who would you have? Man, I'd be Jesus, bang, first time, no worries. No worries. I would love to hang out with that dude. Questions, everything, like, prayer. I just, man, like, imagine living with him. Imagine hanging out with him, going, like, trekking with him and seeing his miracles. and, And, like, we understand he actually gives his disciples power and they get to do the same miracles. And, like, imagine that, like, mind blowing. But he's saying here, it's better if I, it's better for you if I go. He's like, guys, I know it's awesome being with me, because I'm awesome. But what's even better is I'll send you the Holy Spirit. I'll send you, you know, be like that me and Daniel hanging, like if I'm here and like, I'm doing your maths for you. And I'll say, hey, it's going to be better if I go. Because if I go, Daniel, who's a trained accountant, will come and do your maths with you. It's, we're, looking at, we're looking at something like that. Where, so th- this is, it, it says, uh, if I do go, then I will send him to you. Uh, John chapter 14 says this, uh, verse 11. Believe me when I say that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Jesus has walked around doing all these sorts of miracles and he's talking, he's showing, like he, he's demonstrating, he, he is like, Jesus is coming on earth and he's just wrecking physics. He's just doing stuff like someone's missing a limb, boom, you have a new limb. Your eyes are totally ruined. You have eyes now and you can see. Like there's only a certain amount of food, but then there's enough to feed everybody and way more food than you had before. Like he's splitting the atom, he, he's... He's, gra- like, he's doing stuff that just wrecks your understanding. He's demonstrating that, look, I'm operating on a sphere and a, that's different to what you get. Like, I, I'm God on earth and I'm showing you that there is a realm that is superior to this realm, that can interfere with this realm, that, that can just pull in and pull out of this realm like nothing. He's saying, like, this is who I am, guys. Then he goes, like, so this is, his disciples have been living with him, seeing it, breathing it. Walking with him and just, and then he says the most radical thing. He says, uh, like, he's saying, believe, like, he's saying, guys, you know me. And if you don't get it, at least look at what's happened around me and then, like, use your head. And then, but then he goes on and he says, very truly, I tell you. In Australian, he's saying, I'm not mucking around, guys. He's like, dead set. Listen to this. Fair dinkum, mate. Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Sorry, that is super impressive. That is crazy, crazy, crazy impressive. Jesus is saying, guys, you've seen me restore limbs. You've seen me raise the dead. You've seen me restore blind eyes. You've seen me heal deaf ears. You've seen me help crazy people become sane. You've seen me that did all sorts of things. He says, uh, the people, my, my believers, they're going to do that too. You, you guys will be doing that as well. But then he goes on and just says something that will wreck you. 
and they will do even greater things. Why? How? They will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Remember we just read... That Jesus says it's better. Now he's telling us, this, this is just two verses before that. Because I'm going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that my Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me anything in my name and I will do it. That's, that's uh, verse 13 and we jump on down to uh, verse 16. It says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you. The Spirit of truth. What he's saying here, the reason... You're going to do what I do, and even better, even more, even greater, is because the Holy Spirit's coming. That's his, he's saying here, there is a, a manifestation of God coming, that when you encounter me in that form, you will do not just the miracles I've been doing, you will do them, and you're going to do even more. Now some people, what that, it's funny, I like this, that they look at the bit more and they think, well, miracles are from days gone by. The more miracle is that people get to know Jesus. Because, and, and honestly, that is the greatest miracle of all. The forgiveness of your sin, the salvation of your heart, you're stepping into eternity. That is the greatest miracle of all. Absolutely. Or they say, well, just volume, is, there's going to be greater volume because Jesus was one guy living in one little area. He only could walk around a few Ks, and, but the volume of miracles is going to be greater and the volume of salvations is going to be greater. And so that's the greater. So, okay, well, fine. And then how do you explain what I have been doing? You will do the works I have been doing and greater. So, okay, let's just say it's talking about volume. Let's just say it's talking about salvation. Awesome more but it's also the stuff jesus was doing raising the dead putting eyes in people putting your hearing in people having crazy people sane like <laughs> because the holy spirit's coming this is what jesus is saying is available to the church this is what he's saying is available to you and me how do we do greater things I'm glad you asked. I don't know if I'll ever get tired of that. This is a... Ma the Pastor Malcolm, Dr. Reverend Malcolm Smith, one of the absolute pioneers of... In the state of Western Australia, or even all of Australia, an absolute legend. Now, this guy, when he retired after 30 years of uh, being the executive director of Adult and Teen Challenge, we all got together and came up with, and, and rem, we all reminisced about some Malcolmisms. Malcolmisms are things that Malcolm would say. Like, him and his wife, they're both crazy, crazy matchmakers. And Malcolm would say, why should I suffer alone? Why should we suffer alone? And so, <laughs> or he would say, like, one of the things he would say was, why do we do this? I'm glad you asked. So Malcolm, you're just, I just want you to know that your ministry is, is, is living on. I'm glad you asked. Have faith in God. How do we do greater things? Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Oh, right, <laughs> it's so simple. It's that simple. I t truly, I tell you, uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself in the sea and doesn't doubt in their heart but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. I am looking, we are in a little while going to be doing a series on our church's values. And one of our values is faith, is, is radical faith. And I am so excited to be able to teach more on this exact passage. But what we started to get introduced to here is the idea that if you believe, whatever you believe, it will happen. You ask Jesus with total faith, and, and Jesus boiled it down. He's like, guys, this total faith isn't some extreme thing that's only for like the full yogi type sitting on a mountain, humming type thing. No, no, he said, all you need is faith like a mustard seed. A tiny little bit, tiny little bit will do. A tiny little bit is all you need. And you can shift mountains. Uh, but as, but, and don't doubt in your heart. Now we're introduced to this story where Jesus, 
he, he's, had a, he's, he's, he's been off with a couple of his, uh, his, key, his key leaders uh, on a retreat, a key leader retreat up a mountain. That coming down the mountain and now he's with the rest of his team. There's a bit of, a, bit of an argument going on. They're like, what? And Jesus is like, hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, what's, uh, and then the, the dad, one of the, the, uh, there's a guy in the crowd who's arguing, perhaps I expect he, he might be the, the, the uh, protagonist or uh, the antagonist, whichever way you look at it, <laughs> arguing with the disciples. And he's like, Jesus, I'm so glad you're here. My kid is super, super, super unwell. He's, he has seizures. He has a demon. He, he just throws himself in the fire and the water. I asked your guys to heal him like, you know, that's what they do. You guys will do that. They've come, prayed for him. Nothing's happening. And Jesus, Jesus is like, he slams his guys like you don't actually see any other place in the scripture. It's like, you perverse, um, uh, you perverse generation, you have little faith. And he, but then he goes on and just says something really radical. He's like, how long do I have to stay with you? Like, we are so often think when we fall short of God, like he pushes us away or he takes his distance. He's like, ah, you guys, you obviously need me around more. That's his response. He's busted them like he, not, that's the worst time he ever, like, jars his people. And, he's, and but then his response is, oh, you obviously need more of me. Don't ever, ever, ever think that your sin or your mistakes push God away. God looks at your mistakes, he looks at your sin, and he's like, you obviously need some more of me. And just so you know, if we don't get time for that, that is actually one of the works of the Holy Spirit, is to let you guys know that. Right, so, this is happening. Je and then the dad says to Jesus, <laughs> he's like, if you can, can you heal my son? And Jesus takes offense at this. He's like, if you can. <laughs> Excuse? Like, like, you think you just, like, like, you know, like sometimes you're, like, if you can. And Jesus is like, you don't actually see him take offense much. He's like, if you can, do you know who you are talking to, my friend? He's like, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father. Now, this is the really, really exciting part. And this is where, where we're, I think we're, in, we're invited into stepping up our faith walk. We're invited into seeing miracles where perhaps we struggle to see miracles. The father says to, his, to, says to Jesus, he's like, I do believe, help me in my unbelief. I, I, I believe, but I also have unbelief. Because remember we said, if you speak to the mountain, believe in your heart, and don't have unbelief, it'll be done. This guy's saying, I believe, but also have unbelief. Anyway, so Jesus does his thing. Boom, this kid's healed, back on his way, happy as Larry. Dad and him go off and live happily ever after. Now, verse 28, we jump down a touch. The disciples, after the crowds are gone, they've gone back home there. You've got to give them credit for this. Because they say to Jesus... It says, uh, verse 20, Matthew 9, verse 28 says this. After Jesus had gone indoors, with his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can only come out by prayer. Some translations say prayer and fasting. Nearest I can understand, the fasting is added. And fasting is amazing and it helps you. I think fasting is awesome and helps with unbelief and all these things. But I don't think that's what this scripture actually says. So, this kind can only come out by prayer. Now, a lot of the time we think he's talking about the demon here. A lot of the time we think, oh, there are certain demons that you've got to go and go off and pray about. And then, like, because this is a really bad demon, a real strong one. So, what you don't get is that the name of Jesus is the name that's above every other name. It's not the power of the demon that's the issue here. It is the unbelief. I believe, help me with my unbelief. I'm speaking to the mountain, I believe, but I also got doubt. What he's saying here is this doubt, because the dad, he addressed the dad directly. He said, the dad's like, I believe, but I, 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 uh, help me in my unbelief. His, and then what did Jesus do? He helped him in his unbelief, set the kid free. The unbelief goes through prayer. In Jude chapter 20, uh, Jude's only got one chapter. Jude 20 says this. 
I'm reading from the message. But you, dear friends, carefully build yourself up in this most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. And from context, we understand that praying in the Holy Spirit is talking about praying in tongues. How does that work? Glad you asked. I might not do that again. I think it's running really thin. <laughs> promises, promises. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. It says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Hang on, what we're talking about weaknesses here? Because we, the disciples' faith was weak. Jude says, you get stronger through praying in, the, praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit. Paul's saying here, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, and then it starts to tell us how. He says, we don't know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. When you're praying in tongues, you are praying the perfect will of God. And Melissa explained this the other day, that this dovetails onto the next verse, which says, and we know that all things... God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. So the all things that work out are because we're praying in tongues. We're praying God's perfect will. Strengthening ourselves and our inner, we're strengthening our inner man. What did uh, Jude put it like this? Care, building yourself up in your most holy faith. You're developing your faith, growing your faith, strengthening your faith by praying in tongues. You're praying God's perfect will. God's working in you, through you, doing things. What you are walking on today is yesterday's prayers. If you are praying God's perfect will over... Yesterday you were praying God's perfect will. Do you know what you're walking in today? God's perfect will. If you're praying your perfect will, which is not perfect... You're living in some manifestation of that. What we're invited into is this place where we get to pray God's perfect will for our lives, for our, in, for our faith walk, for, our journey, like for working everything out for our good because we're praying ahead of time. Because God's there. We, what, what was the very start? How did we start this, this, this message? In the beginning, God... created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. Pastor Chin said, we need to speak into the darkness. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now, the earth was formless, empty, darkness. Formless, empty, dark. There was no substance, there was no image, there was no hope. Ever felt like that? Had those days, weeks, years, life? And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. You know which waters it was hovering over? Those waters that we just talked about. Now, to understand spirit, the word spirit here used in this particular passage is the Hebrew word ruah. It means breath, wind. The, when the New Testament, the word spirit is uh, the, the Greek word pneuma, which again means breath, wind. Uh, the, the common English version says this, God's wind swept over the waters. God, the Holy Spirit, it's hovering over things. I love one, uh, the, the Amplified even includes brooding. I mean, my mind's like a mother hen hatching an egg. Like God's just there. And as we're praying in tongues, we're praying God's perfect will. And this just mother hen's hatching an egg. She's like, you know what? It's dark and formless. But I'm at work. My perfect will is being executed. Because I work all things for the good of those who love me and are called according to my purposes. So we're invited into this interaction that we can have with God. Where we can change our inside understand, we can, we can change our inside capacity. 
We can change the current level of ability that we have inside. We have the ability to strengthen our inner man, to strengthen our faith walk by bringing the Holy Spirit into it. And Jesus said, do this. You get to do the stuff I was doing and even more. And why? I'm glad you asked. He said that you will receive power. You'll be clothed in power. And this is stuff that Mel and Chin spoke to us about. So we're not going to go there. But then he goes and says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, there's a, there's a movie, uh, A Few Good Men. It's a uh, Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember that key line. Anyway, one of the things he's got, one, in the argument there is, is like, he, he's explaining that there's stuff that is standard, but it's not in the manual. It's not in the manual because it's already like there. Like, he, like they're showing, he, he pulls the manual, it's like, all right, well, we're in the manual, tell me how to get to the lunchroom. It's like, well, you just go and follow the other guys to the lunchroom. One of the things that Jesus didn't have to tell his guys when he said go is what they're supposed to do. Do you know why? Because he had already told them to go on multiple occasions. And do you know what he said to them when he told them to go? As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come. Heal the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse those that have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely give. So when he said go, they know what, they know the assignment. And, and he goes on and, and, and he clarifies it a little further. Go into all of the world, preach the gospel to all nations. Baptizing, ma making disciples, baptizing him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to do everything I've taught you. That's the vision of our church. We've been through it so many times. It's, make, it's introduce people to Jesus. Make disciples. Have those disciples go out and introduce people to Jesus. And we've got the power of the Holy Spirit in us, with us, to help that. Now, for time, I'm not going to screw down into the scriptures because there's places that say that he helps us speak. And when we're speaking, it, hearts get impacted. Convicted is the word used to understand they need Jesus. It says when we pray for people, God moves and people are healed. The evidence itself speaks to the accuracy of the message. Do you know my friends and my family, so many of them came to Christ because I was supernaturally delivered from heroin addiction. Do you know, I, I was, my mum prayed for me when I was dead. They were trying to give my organs away. My mum said, no, he's going to need them. And she prayed for me and I lived. I had a doctor come to me afterwards and he wouldn't even come into my room. He was on the other side. And he was freaked out by me. And he's like, you've got somebody looking out for you. He didn't understand it. He was terrified by the fact I was alive still. One time we were at, my brother was getting married and we're, at a, we're getting ready for a wedding and, and one of the guys' legs was too short for the pants and the, the guy's like, well, we can adjust that. And I'm like, no, we'll adjust the leg. Come here. We went off and prayed and his leg grew out. We took him back and the guy, the pants fit and the guy's like, what on earth happened? The guy who had a back injury since he was a child from a motorcycle accident pain his whole life pain was gone leg was the same length as the other one told the guy these guys prayed for me in the name of jesus and jesus healed me this guy that was selling suits was like this is what i've been looking for my whole life i've found what i've been looking for we're able to connect him in with the church this is go into the world 
pray for the sick, raise the dead. We do it by the Holy Ghost. We do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is what we're being invited into. Now, we're going to worship and, and, and our, our team's going to play. And I just want you to press in, guys. We're going to stand and we're going to worship and we're going to press in. And, and some of you are already being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I just want you to just, just press in and God, I promise you God's going to fill you again. But if you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, come forward. We'll pray for you and God will meet you like you've never been met before. You, you'll understand this encounter. God himself, God on earth, being in you and on you. So let's stand, ch uh, uh, church, and team, let's go. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more than that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. If you want a fresh encounter with God, just press in. If you, anyone wants prayer for anything, come forward. I just think God's in the mood for answering prayers right now. just drop in this place Lord God church if there's anyone here that has never made that decision to personally follow Christ to personally invite Christ into your life right now I'm going to pray a simple prayer and I just want you to say uh, just amen if it's you uh, and, and I would love to be able to meet with you afterwards because I know that this is uh, it's a, such a key moment Lord that the person if anyone's here that doesn't know you God that today would be the day they put their trust in you if that's you I just want you in your heart to say even with your mouth to say hey that's me Lord that's me hallelujah Lord that today would be their day to know you Lord that they would meet with you in person this morning and meet with you in person Just while everyone's still worshiping and their eyes are closed and no one's looking around, if that's you, if you're that, I would love, just pop your hand in the air. I want to pray with you, meet with you afterwards and, and, and just help you on your journey. If, if you're online and that's you, please reach out. We're going to get you started. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and meet with us, Lord God. Holy Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence. To be
May we be aware, Lord, of your presence every single moment in the name of Jesus. Because you're already here, Holy Spirit. Ours then is to connect with you. Ours is to yield to you, Lord. To yield over and over and over and over to you. Thank you, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. exchange where his super comes over our natural hallelujah holy spirit we thank you for your presence we thank you for your presence the bible talks about how jesus christ was being baptized physical baptism by john the baptist and how that the spirit of the lord descended upon him in a bodily form of a dove and there was a voice from heaven, the voice of the Father. This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Father affirmed the Son in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So if anybody has ever doubted, anybody has ever questioned about the triune nature of God, that is a picture there. You have God the Father affirming the Son as the Holy Spirit descended on the Son. And we thank you, Lord, this morning for this word that has come to empower us, to challenge us, and to uplift us. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, for He empowers us to pray the will of the will of God. The will of God. We how do we know the will of God? We know the will of God through the word of God. And who's the who's the who's the author of the word of God? It's the spirit of God. And we thank you this morning. Friends, it's about surrender. This whole thing is about surrender. That's what it's about. It's about yielding. See, we surrendered our lives to the Lordship of Christ, and He imputed His righteousness upon us. Now when it comes to encountering the Holy Spirit, to engaging with Him, where He equips us and empowers us, it's about surrender as well. 
It's about surrender. Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. I surrender my will, my faculties to you. I, sur I yield. I don't want my reasoning to be a hindrance. The Bible says God's ways are higher than mine. His thoughts are exalted over mine. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so I yield. I surrender. I may not understand, but I surrender. I surrender. Friend, don't be part of a church like everyday church, which is a Holy Spirit led and Holy Spirit, you know, filled church and not encounter the Holy Spirit personally. We're just going to keep worshiping church, but if you're, uh, if, if you want to move on or you want to go and have a coffee and, and, and get something deep yeah please feel free to do that just uh, while we're still worshiping while those are people who, who wish to are staying here in the presence of god let's just 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 uh just be mindful of that hey just want to share a couple of testimonies because this god he's not mucking around do you know i've seen with my own eyes I prayed for a guy who had a stroke. His face was dropped. He had lost function in half of his body. I prayed for him in the emergency department. His face lifted. Two days later, I was in the hospital doing a, a visit. The surgeon walked in and he's got two, two uh, x-rays or scans or whatever they do. And he's like, this is the scan we took when you arrived here after your stroke. It clearly shows the, the, the mark on your brain. Here's one we took this morning and there's no mark got no explanation but you're free to go another time there was a gentleman in our church that had a brain aneurysm the doctor described it as a ticking time bomb at any moment it could go we prayed on a Sunday morning he went for a scan on Monday for his for his routine check for it and it was gone the doctor said I don't know what's happened here but you don't need to see me again for five more years. Prayed for a little girl in the hospital. She's in the intensive care unit. She was so bloated and swollen and purple. She was not recognizable. She's praying with the mom. One or two days later, in, the, in the, the side room there for the, and the doctor walked in and, and he said, I don't understand what's happened, but we were trying to give the little kid a needle and she's pushing my hand away. She shouldn't have any function. Guys, we're dealing with a God who supersedes earth's principles. He rises above it. He is more powerful than the stuff. I've seen a guy get hit in the eye with a, a, a fishing equipment and his eye was gone. It was, it was, it's no vision went, it was all, the, the color was gone, the, all the bits were gone, it was all just this pasty blue. And he's, he was like, Jacob, I can't see, I can't see, pray for me. I laid hand on his eye and when I took my hand away, his eye was back to normal color and perfect sight and pain was gone. God's not mucking around. This power is real. He heals. The Holy Spirit is God on earth. He wants to be part of your life. He wants to get involved in your circumstances. He is able. He is able to transform anything that is going on in your life. Anything. Literally anything. I've been driving, we were driving on a, a, a bike ride and it was raining and we would have had to have stopped for the rain and, 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 and the lady that I was with prayed. She said, rain, go to the left and the right because it was a drought had broken and people, the farmers needed rain. So she didn't pray for the whole thing to stop. She said, rain, go on the left side of the road, on the right side of the road, not on the road. And we drove 
down the road. We're raining on each side and our windscreen wipers were not needed. The cyclists were dry as we rode down this street through rain on the either side of the road. God wants to get involved in your life. <laughs> Holy Spirit, we, we love you. You are so welcome. We, uh, we adore you. Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, thank you. We want more of you in our lives. Teach us. Teach us. <laughs> oh, like the man prayed. You know that guy that was talking to Jesus? Do you know what talking to Jesus is? <laughs> His prayer. He prayed. He's like, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. God, help us. Help us to walk close with you. Help us to understand who you are. Lord, that we would believe and not doubt that we would have faith in you and that doubt would have no place in us, no place in us, Lord God, that we truly would see mountains moved. We truly would see your will manifest on earth. You're awesome. We love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.